Hi, I have one more video here, okay, pertaining to your macro topic on national income. So today in class, uh, one student was asking me, what is the difference between the first two chapters in uh, macroeconomics? Okay, because they seem quite similar. It seems like GDP is the only variable, or rather the only uh, uh, concept that keeps floating around. So I thought um, I'll do a short video to tell you what's the link between the two chapters, and then probably you can understand it more clearly. Okay, national income. If I look at the first part, okay, this topic is known as national income accounting. Okay, whereas the so the second topic we call it national income determination, or sometimes you will call it uh, an introduction to Keynesian economics, or how the macroeconomy works. Okay. Now, to understand the link between the two chapters, you first need to know what are the important takeaways from each one of them. So in the first chapter, National Income Accounting, I'll say there are two main takeaways. The first one pertains to performance of the economy. Okay. How do you measure the performance of the economy? And you will learn in this chapter that um, we look at the four key economic indicators. Okay. GDP. Or the real GDP growth rate tells you about economic growth. Your inflation rate, as measured by your general price level, tells you about price stability. Okay, unemployment rate, of course, about the employment figures. And the balance of payment reflects the health of the economy's external transactions. Okay. Price stability, unemployment, and this is your external health. Okay? It's much like how you measure the health of a person, right? There are some attributes to consider. And um, after we measure the performance of the economy, we also want to learn how to tell or how to measure the standards of living in the economy. So within this chapter, you have uh, material as well as non-material aspects. Okay? So you can think of the performance of the economy as the structure of the house. How robust is the structure? Okay? And when you think about standards of living, you are looking at the happiness level of the person. Okay, So standards of living are a bit more qualitative, whereas when you look at the structure of the house, the performance of the economy is slightly more quantitative. Okay, Now, what you see from the first chapter is that to measure material standards, we use uh, real GDP per capita. Of course, you have to combine with other indicators like your Gini coefficient, the composition of income, you also need to consider the unrecorded transactions and uh, some other attributes, right? So I have a separate parachute concept on that. I'll probably do a video another day. Um, but across the two parachute concepts, uh, I call them parachute concepts because um, if I open up the parachutes, they pretty much summarize the main things in these two chapters. One common factor is um, GDP. GDP appears in both cases. So what does this tell us? Now it tells us that GDP is very important to understand macroeconomics, right? Whether to measure performance of the economy or to measure living standards, GDP is one of the key variables, okay, or key data points that you want to consider. So if GDP is so important, the second chapter really seeks to teach us how to measure GDP. Okay, bad idea in using the highlighter to write. Uh, okay, so how to measure GDP? And you know, because we are talking about econs, uh, we want to measure equilibrium numbers. Equilibrium meaning there's no tendency for further change. Because uh, can you imagine you get some numbers, okay, and you present this to your minister for finance, say they are GDP numbers, okay? If you're not getting equilibrium numbers, there's a chance that the numbers will change, right? They keep changing over time, and you're not getting stable numbers. That's not what we want, okay? So the focus here is how to measure equilibrium level of GDP. You will learn that there are three models. The first one is the circular flow model, followed by AD versus Y, and then AD versus AS. Okay. So we, you may start to wonder, why do we need three models to measure the same thing? Now, it's the same reason why you have a blue pen, a red pen, and probably a green pen or black pen in your, in your uh, pencil case. You hold different pens because they serve different purposes. Okay. Probably the red pen is for corrections, uh, the, the, the blue pen is for normal uh, 
write-outs and probably the green or the black pens for your, your things that you want to do. You get the idea. So we have three different models because we have different uses. Okay, We use the circular flow to derive this outcome. That income equates output and equates expenditure. Okay, This is quite a central identity uh, that we use a lot in macroeconomics. Right? If you didn't notice, we refer to GDP as a national income. So how can we equate a product concept? That's why GDP, right? Product concept with income. That's really the because the circular flow tells us it can be done. Or how is it possible that you can take net property income or net factor income to abroad and you subtract this away from GDP? So you see we are doing things with income on one side and GDP on the other side. You can do it because they are equal at equilibrium. Okay, so the circular flow is actually quite useful. Huh? The A versus Y model helps us understand the multiplier process. Now, some schools may use the AD and ES model to do this, which is fine as well. Okay, um, The A versus Y model allows you to see the change in AE versus the change in income. So that basically gives you the variables in your multiplier equation. Okay, this is here. So we need the A versus Y model to understand okay, the multiplier process. In fact, because these models were derived by Keynes, okay, you can think of it as Keynes designing these models to teach us these concepts. So he's trying to explain to us okay, why these things are so. And in doing so, it's easier to use a model to explain. Okay. The same reason why we use models uh, to answer math questions in primary school. And um, if you look at the AD versus AS model, we use it to understand, okay, in fact, uh, this goes back to performance of the economy. If you look at the axis, okay, we have a uh, real GDP and we have general price level here. So this tells us about price stability. This tells us about economic growth. And the level of economic growth can be used to infer the level of cyclical unemployment. So you can see the AD and AS model is really built to help us understand your macro goals. Okay, So we can basically try to infer or observe the three indicators or accept BOP from the same model. All right. So these are the users of each model and we can understand the equilibrium condition under each one of them as well. Okay, um, so these are the connections, uh, or rather the links between the first two par uh, paragraphs. Sorry, paragraphs. The first two topics, and after you've understood uh, how to use these models, the next few sections pertain to uh, each of the macro goals. Okay, in terms of causes, consequences, and cures. And to get better understanding, you can refer to my other videos. Okay, on the A3 exercise or the one or three exercise. Okay, so I hope this helps. If you have any follow up queries, same thing, drop me an email, deadlycons.tutor at gmail.com. Now I'm actually located at Coronation Plaza, so if you're around Bukit Timah, uh, if you like, you can drop by and probably just pop your question to me. Okay, okay, thank you.